later we may be talking about what's all the great things that have happened over the course of our time together, but can we just give a warm felt clap for our conference organizers? What an amazing... I could tell you stories about the great job they've done. For those who are here for the first time, you have probably no idea of how impressive this is. But let me jump right in. I once was asked, well, Michael, if you had the opportunity to teach every facilitator in the world just one technique, just one particular technique, what would it be? And if you were in my seven separators class, would you hand, raise your hand, please? Okay, so you're not gonna learn anything over the next eight minutes, okay? But this is for everybody else. So I have a question for you. I'm gonna ask a question. If the answer is true, would you stand, please? That when it comes time to ask a question where you want lots of answers, the most important attribute of the question is that it's open-ended. If you think it's true, hands please. If you think it's false, stand, please stay seated. Would you stand if it's true? Okay, for those who are sitting, you got the right answer. That is false. And you're about to see why. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you two starting questions. And we're going to ask which is better. Pretend you're interviewing, you're doing a uh, requirements analysis for a school system, putting it in a scheduling system. And if you're putting in a scheduling system, trying to figure out what software you need, you only need to ask four questions. What are your inputs? How do you process them? What are your outputs? What are your business rules? For those who do IT consulting and IT facilitation, you know, that's essentially it, those four things. So now we're about to ask that very first question. I'm gonna show you two question types. You tell me which one is better. Let's look at the first question type. The first thing we wanna talk about are inputs. What are the inputs to the scheduling process? Fair question. Let's take a look at the second question type. If you were about to develop the school schedule, what information would you need to have close by? So those who say question type A is the better question, hands please. Come on, get them up. Ooh, look at that. Those who say question type B, raise your hand. There you go, look at that. And you're right, question type B is better. But take a look. They're both open-ended. So clearly the thing that makes question type B isn't that it's open-ended, it's something else. And for those who know, hush, I'm not asking you. So what is it that makes question type A, the one on the left? Why is that a good question? There's some good things about it. Please, give me a quick answer. What are some of those? Anyone? Why is question, yes. It's specific. What words make it specific? There you go, you're asking input, scheduling process, those words make it specific. What else, anything else that's good about the question type A, anyone? Yes. Yes, how is the person in the question in question type A? Oh, okay, so what else is good about question type A though? The one on the A, that's a good answer for B. All right, well let's go to B. What's good about question type B? Great answer, the thing that's good about question type B is, and what words puts the person in the question? The word you, doesn't it? What else is good? Again, those who've been with me can't answer. What else is good? It says information instead of input. That's right, it says information, not input. It's their language. What else is good? It's a real scenario. Oh, say it again. It's a real scenario. Oh, what words make it a real scenario? Well, it talks about a school schedule. Yeah, well, the school schedule, it's on the other side. The school, school process. But there's words that put it in the scenario. Who's got it? You got that close by. Yeah, close by, you're visualizing things, aren't you? I'm gonna show you, yes, please. About to develop, you get that word? It gets them in the scenario they're about to develop. Now I'm gonna show you something that you'll never forget, I promise, you will never forget this. Play along with me. Would you close your eyes? I promise they'll stay down here, I promise. Close your eyes for a second. Listen to the type A question. The first thing we wanna talk about are inputs. What are the inputs to the scheduling process? Would you open your eyes? If you saw an image, would you raise your hand? When I was reading that question, if an image came to mind, we have one person and the others. Just one, what did you see? Yes, that's right. What did you see though? There you go, you saw something coming in, something, in fact, if you ask engineers, if you ask IT people, that's what they saw, a flow chart. You ask everybody else, they saw nothing. So you're clear you're mentally deranged, right? But that's okay, that's exactly what happens. You ask registrars, you know what they saw? Nothing. Let's do it again with the type B question. Close your eyes, please. Listen to the type B. So if you were about to develop the school schedule, what is the information you need to have close by? Now would you open your eyes? Who saw an image? 
Yeah, look at that. Look at that. What did you see? What did you see, Rosanna? Oh, who saw themselves at a desk? Yeah. Now, here's the kicker. What's on the desk, Rosanna? Yeah, all the information you need for scheduling. Now, this is powerful. Why is that so important? Because this is what happens. If you ask the type B question, if you were about to develop a school schedule, what information would you need to have close by? They're going to go this. Oh, I need to have this. I need to have this. I need to have this. Why? Because they can see their answers. Where are they? They're on the desk. And when you do that, when you create a question where they can see their answers, they go like this. The hands go up because they can see their answers. If you ask the type A question, um, the first thing we want to talk about are inputs. What are the inputs to the scheduling process? You're going to get this. Hmm. What do you think? And we call that crickets. You get complete silence. Complete silence. Why? Because they're trying to visualize their answers. What are they doing? They're trying to create the visual that you didn't create for them. And what ends up happening is they end up feeling stupid. Oh gosh, I guess I should know the answer to this. And you're thinking, come on, you're registrars, what's the answer? So when we don't do our job, they feel stupid. Remember, facilitator comes from the word facil, which means to make easy. Our job is to ask questions that make it easy. And when we make it easy, they go like this. I like to now define the two question types. The one on the left is called, I'm sorry, the one on the right is a visual question. You can see the answers. The one on the left is what the facilitator wants to know. What do they want to know? What are the inputs? What do they ask? What are the inputs? So are you asking type B questions or type A questions? Are you asking questions that draw an image of what they want to know? Are you asking questions that are really what you want to know? When you do a type B question, they can see their answers. How do you build a type B? There are three steps. One, start with an image building phrase. Think about, imagine, consider, if. If you start your question with a what, <coughs> here comes a type A. How, <coughs> type A, why, <coughs> type A. Type B questions start with an image building phrase because you're building an image. From there, you go to the next step. After the type B, thank you. You extend the image with at least two phrases so they can see the question. And then finally, you end with a type A, your direct question. I like to run through an example. Thank you, thank you. Nice example is, please, yes, next, next hit. Suppose you want to know the steps in the current hiring process. What's the type A question, everybody? What are the? Isn't that easy? Type A's are easy. It's what we want to know. You ask, what are the steps in the hiring process? And what are they going to do, everybody? Uh, let me think. Because they can't see their answers. When they see their answers, they go like this. So let's ask, that's my bell. Let's ask the type B question, shall we? Let's go to it. Let's go to the type B question. You're going to start with an image building phrase, extend the image, ask the type A. So here's the image building phrase. Think about the last time you hired someone. Ooh, isn't that great? Think about the last time you hired someone. Then you extend the image with at least two phrases. Think about the steps you went through, the people you talked with, all the paperwork you had to fill out, all the things you had to do to get that person hired. They can see their answers, can't they? Then you ask your type A question. What are the steps in the current hiring process? Up goes the hands, you get the answers just like that. Gang, it's been fantastic. This is a very simple activity. Very simple to understand, really hard to do. For those who were in the class, really hard to do. So if you don't plan your type B's ahead of time, you get into your session, what are you gonna ask? Every time, you're not gonna go, oh well, I got a question to ask, wait a minute, let me try to figure it out. No, you're gonna ask a type A. So please, as you think about your session, when do you ask a type B? For every agenda item. So plan every agenda item, write out your type B so that they can answer it. Thank you, hope that was helpful to you.